Imagine, you're walking down the street on the way to meet your date for dinner. Suddenly, you come across an adorable golden retriever. You stop to pet the dog for a moment, running your hand through its thick fur before you continue on your way. When you get there and shake your date's hand, she's appalled by the way your hand smells. You think to yourself, hmm, what if it's possible to get rid of that nasty smell and instead replace it with a smell that's more appealing to humans? Well, I have some news for you. It may be possible, but it may not be so simple, ethical, or affordable. Believe it or not, scientists have created some pretty amazing transgenic animals already. Take for example, the transgenic line of glow-in-the-dark rabbits, created at the University of Hawaii Manoa, using genes from jellyfish. Or how about glowfish, as they're called? These fish have been genetically modified by scientists into fancier, more colorful versions of themselves by using genes from other organisms, such as sea anemones. These are known as the first transgenic pets, and there are likely to be many more to come once people's ideas around ethics change. In this video, we will focus on how scientists use transgenic mice for research and why. A transgenic organism is an individual of a species that contains a gene from another individual of the same species or from another species. These genes are called transgenes. Transgenesis is the process used by scientists to introduce a gene from one animal to another. This process has three main steps. In the first step, identification, the gene for a specific trait is identified. In the isolation step, the vectors are created by breaking the cells, collecting the target DNA sequence, replicating it, and inserting it into the bacterial genome. In the final step, transformation, the vector containing the transgene is inserted into the target animal. For some organisms like mice, the most efficient way to transfer DNA into these cells is microinjection into the male pronucleus. This is called pronuclear injection, and it's the most common method of producing transgenic mice today. Before we go over the steps involved in pronuclear injections, let's go over some basics first. As you may know, all female mammals are born with all of the reproductive cells inside of them that they will produce for their entire life. These cells are called oocytes. Even though they may have an unintuitive pronunciation, the fertilization of these cells offers scientists many opportunities to take advantage of important cellular mechanisms. Within 24 hours of fertilization, the fertilized oocytes will have developed into zygotes, at which point two pronuclei appear inside of the embryo. Let's move on to the steps of pronuclear injection and what happens inside of the mouse genome as these steps progress. So first, two wild type mice which are the mice with the purest genetics, are mated together. Next, the fertilized oocytes are removed from the female reproductive tract. Because bacteria carry circular genomes, restriction enzymes are used to splice apart the DNA from the bacterial vector in order to linearize it. Fourth, a pronuclear injection of the linear transgene is administered into the male pronucleus of the wild type zygote. Now that the zygote has been inoculated, several copies of the injected DNA will integrate into a random location on the chromosome. Scientists think this may occur as DNA repair enzymes seek out and repair broken ends of DNA. However, the exact mechanism for random integration has not been determined. Integration can occur in at least three different points throughout embryonic development. Integration that occurs at the first point, prior to the first mitosis, will result in all of the cells in the organism containing the transgene. If the integration occurs after the first mitosis, only half of the cells in the mouse will contain the transgene. If integration occurs after the second mitosis, only one in four of the cells in the body will contain the foreign DNA. In the next step, pseudopregnancy is induced in female mice using a progesterone injection. The zygotes containing the foreign DNA are now injected into this mouse, which gives birth to mice, which may or may not contain the transgene. 
In order to determine which mice contain the gene, snippets of their tails are tested using PCR. The mice that test positive for the transgene can be mated with other mice to establish lines of transgenic mice. As you can see, using a standard pronuclear injection leads to big variations in levels of gene expression. It is for this reason that scientists have developed other, more efficient methods of creating transgenic mice, which we will talk about in future videos. Standard pronuclear injections are quick and easy ways to get transgenic mice. However, they are a bit like putting your hand into a hat and pulling out a number from 0 to 100. There is no way for you to tell which number you are going to get. These organisms are helpful in research for studying and modeling diseases and genetic disorders in humans. Some examples include heart disease, obesity, Parkinson's disease, and substance abuse disorders as previously exemplified. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe. All of our products can be found on our website linked below. Cygen has a variety of stem cells, media, and many transgenic and custom animal model services to choose from.